Come out of the world, oh my people, seek the truth, avoid the evil, learn Yahweh's ways, Torah life. Shalom everybody, it's Paul Neeson with uh, the Torah portion for this coming Shabbat. And uh, I just want to thank everybody for your wonderful comments about my other previous Torah portions and all of the, the talks I've been giving here on on the video camera here. And if you have any questions or comments or you'd like me to talk about any specific issues, uh, just post them below the videos and we will get to them. Uh, TorahLifeMinistries.org is the website. Uh, TorahLife.tv, you can go directly to all the videos. This coming uh, Torah portion is... Uh, number 31 in the cycle, and it's Leviticus 21.1 to 24.23. And uh, we're, again, like every week, there's so much we could talk about, but there's three things I want to focus on this week. Uh, and the first one we find here in Leviticus 21.5. In Leviticus 21.5, it just uh, reiterates what it said last week. And last week it said, I think it was 1927 of Leviticus, it says, Do not mar the edges of your beard. And here specifically it's telling the priest not to cut gashes or, or shave their heads or mar the edges of their beard. Uh, you see, people don't really look at this. It's often overlooked, but there's a significance, a strong significance to hair uh, in the scriptures. They were told uh, to let their hair grow, and, and it would grow to the length that our, our Creator designed it to grow to, and it'd be different on everyone. It was part of the features of the face. It's part of the features of the body. And the hair that is there for a protective reason, for health reasons, and for spiritual reasons. Uh, first of all, if you're, growing your hair, if you're shaving your hair all the time, well, how could you mourn the dead and shave your hair if you don't have any hair? Uh, and some people say that they choose not to grow a beard. Well, let me correct you men out there. Every man grows a beard. Uh, some men just decide to destroy theirs on a regular basis. And, and a lot of them decide to mimic the ways of the Egyptians or the Canaanites, which were commanded not to do, uh, by taking funny shapes like goatees and other shapes to the, to the beard. And, and I'm not saying you're, you're not saved if, you're, if you have a goatee or, or if you shave your head, but I am saying you're not following what the scriptures say and you're not getting the point uh, of the whole idea of if Yahweh puts it there, leave it there. If he doesn't want it there, he'll take it away or, or something. Uh, but but so you know. But the priest, it goes over and beyond just not shaving. It, it says they are commanded to to keep their hair groomed and not to have it too long or too short. You know, and there's no specifics of of what too long or too short is. Uh, you know, we look at today's society, and definitely people will say men short hair should be a certain length. Uh, but there's no scripture in, in the written Bible, in the Torah, that gives us the exact length that it should be. I personally believe, you know, it, a man's hair should be shorter than a woman's, but if they just let it naturally grow to a degree and they're not uh, hormonal unbalanced, uh, it won't be able to grow as long as a woman's. Uh, but, you know, if it does, you know, we, we can't have the appearance of a woman. And so we either need to pin it up or, or, cut it, or cut it a certain length or something. But, uh, you know, we were designed to be a certain way. And if we take care of our bodies the way we're supposed to be, uh, we'd have a real special thing there. I mean, it's very interesting. You know, I have not studied or looked at a lot of Kabbalah. Uh, but I have studied the topic of hair. And, you know, I heard a, a very mystical thing. I call it mystical because, you know, it's the Sikhs. Uh, it's a culture that... They don't believe in shaving the men or the women, which I think is a good idea, any parts of their body. Uh, but they always talk about the, the male taking the characteristics of the sun and the female taking the characteristics of the moon. And as the sun reflects the moon, the, the woman is reflected off the man. So if a man is spiritually in the right place, the woman he's with will spiritually be in the right place and so on. Uh, but uh, if the sun is not shining bright, uh, the moon is not going to reflect in a bright way either. So it's very interesting, uh, but uh, the point is, they talk about when, uh, the, when, the, when a male shaves, uh, they, call, they say the male's energy is, is on his chin, and when it, or, or people's energy is on his chin, or at least uh, they, they, they open up a door to what's going on inside them. So their point, and again, this is the Sikh uh, culture, they say when a male shaves, uh, he exposes his chin 
uh, to the energy of the moon, and he starts to take on female characteristics. Now, uh, you know, a lot of men that have really long hair, which is a female characteristic, are often uh, shaven, and, or, or they have a, a clear chin or something. Uh, well, I didn't think much of it because it wasn't Torah or anything like that, but then I was reading in uh, the Kabbalah as I looked on what that said about hair. Uh, it didn't say much about hair from that standpoint, but it did speak about the the energies of the moon being female characteristics and the sun being male characteristics. And I found that very interesting. And amongst men today, it's very common for them to suffer uh, from diseases that females only once suffered from, and vice versa. You know, so we have trouble telling this between a male and a female today. And when Yahweh calls homosexuality an abomination, he wasn't only talking about the physical act. He was talking about the characteristics. If you have two males or two females in a house uh, trying to rule the house at the same time, that is homosexuality, and that is an abomination. Well, I believe also, and it's not only the way a person acts, but it's also the way a person looks. And so if you have two males or two females looking the same way, acting the same way, or at least taking on the same characteristics, that's a homosexuality and an abomination to Yahweh. Uh, and I think a great place to start uh, getting away from that abomination would be for males to grow their beards. Uh, and, you know, and just like we take an example from the priest, Yahweh's most holy, is trim, you know, or, or keep it neat. You don't necessarily need to trim it to cut it short, but keep it neat. Same thing with the hair. Keep it neat. Be a good representative. Be a good steward of how you look and, and everything you do. Uh, so this is an important uh, thing we need to keep in mind. Uh, now, you know, the other thing I want to talk about is found in uh, Leviticus, Leviticus 21.7. And, uh, you know, these are some uh, issues that you won't hear a lot of other uh, teachers talking about because they, they kind of strike a, a sour spot with certain people. But I believe it needs to be addressed because it's addressed here in Torah and we need to go over this. But in Leviticus 21.7 it says, A Kohen is not to marry a woman who is a prostitute. Or a priest is not to marry a woman who is a prostitute. And then it goes on later and talks about prostitutes and the whole idea of prostitution. And, and it talks about the immorality of prostitution. And the problem is, it's not only a woman who goes out and purposely stands on a corner and sells herself. That's not only a prostitute. You know, a prostitute is, you know, or at least part of the definition of a prostitute, is somebody, a woman, or even a male, who goes out and, and sells their body uh, for, for uh, you know, sells their, their body for, for whatever uh, financial gain, whether it's straight up money, whether it's jewelry or something else, uh, and, and they'll sleep with more than one person, uh, or have uh, commit immoral acts with more than one person. They'll live and dress in a way that's immoral uh, to try to uh, get some money or something else from a person. And folks, all I'm saying is... <laughs> I'm saying a lot, but I'm telling you here that the way, and a lot of people aren't going to like it, but it's the bottom line. Uh, we have sunken so far in the immorality of today's world. The whole dating scene, uh, which comes from show business, and you look at, for example, the show Sex in the City and all these shows, it's basically nothing but a bunch of prostitutes running around prostituting themselves, uh, male and female. And that's the problem we have today. It's not about just a woman standing on the corner selling her body. It's the woman dressing it immoral, uh, with so much immorality that she's going out and, and getting men to seduce her or seducing men with her looks. Uh, this is a prostitution. Uh, even if the guy's just uh, taking her out for dinner and trying to uh, buy her fancy jewelry and everything else, his goal is to get her into bed. You know, and, and, and that's how she's going to reward him. And that's how society is brought up today. It goes so far against uh, the scriptural way of doing it. Uh, the dating uh, idea today is nothing but a, a whole prostitution a ring going on today. And, and it starts with the immorality of the unknowing uh, parents who are following the ways of other cultures and getting away from the way of Torah. Uh, the whole dating idea today is just not a biblical concept. You know, and, and we need to get back to what scriptures say and stop prostituting ourselves in, in every manner and every way. Uh, so I, I thought that was very interesting when it said, a Cohen is not to marry a, a, a woman who's a prostitute. Well, none of us are. And it talks about the immorality of this. And we really have to 
I have to have our eyes open today because it can be very deceiving of what the world considers as moral and what is truly moral according to Yahweh. And it really comes down to separating the clean from the unclean, which we're going to uh, look at here in a second. And then finally, the whole idea of this week's Torah portion, which we'll look at, is found in Leviticus 23.44. Thus Moses announced to the people of Israel uh, the designated times of Yahweh. So that's what it's really about this week. You know, we talk about the Passover, and we talk about many of the other feasts, and what exactly is to be done on those feasts. Uh, well, that's what Moses was announcing this week. He was talking all about uh, what is supposed to happen, the dates of these actual set appointed times by Yahweh. So if that would be one scripture to sum up this week's Torah portion, even though I gave you two completely different topics that were separate from the, the dates and, and the appointed times, uh, the main point of this week's Torah portion would be Leviticus 23.44, Thus Moses announced to the people of Israel his designated times of Yahweh. You know, and I would even continue that and say that we as believers in Messiah uh, should be keeping throughout all our generations. Uh, so that's an important part of this week. Now, if we go to uh, this week's half Torah, uh, we look at Ezekiel 44, 15 to 31. And I'm not going to get into the whole uh, half Torah this week, uh, but I will look at, it says here, Ezekiel 44, 15. Remember, we were just speaking about uh, separating the clean from the unclean, or the holy from the from the profound, uh, or we, we were separating the, the, what Yahweh wants from what He doesn't want. Uh, we have to remember first what the word holy means. The word holy means, uh, it doesn't mean great or wonderful or special, like many people often think it does. It means set apart. The word holy means set apart. And it says here in Ezekiel 44, 23, uh, They are to teach my people a difference between holy and common, uh, and enable them to disguise uh, between clean and unclean. So that's another way to sum up uh, this week's uh, Torah. You know, we have today's world uh, celebrating the holidays of man, uh, which is the unclean, while they're ignoring the holy days of Yahweh, which are the clean. We have the world prostituting themselves, which is the unclean, versus the moral courtship that Yahweh explains of how it should be done. That's the clean. And then we have the world uh, partaking in customs and cultures, which is the unclean, versus uh, Yahweh's instructions and guidelines, which are the clean. Uh, so we can go on and on, but that's it, uh, folks. This week's Torah Porsche. We have... Uh, uh, everything in the scriptures here that says what we should be doing, but we won't know what they are unless we follow them. You know, even the way we look, we have the, the clean, which is considered by the world unclean. The bearded men, uh, the women that have nice long hair, but then we have the unclean, the women that look like men and the men that dress like women. You know, I say it often, folks, and I'll say it again. Uh, one of the problems with with today's world, from a physical health standpoint, all the way to a spiritual darkness, is the men want to look like women and the women want to act like men. And until we get that right, uh, we're going to be unclean, we're going to be unholy, and we're not going to be set apart for Yahweh. If you want to be set apart for Him, you got to get it right in all areas, and your heart has to be in union with Messiah. All right, everybody, uh, this is Paul Neeson with Torah Life Ministries. If you have any questions or comments, please post them below the videos. Until then, everybody, have a great Shabbat, next Shabbat, and we'll see you again soon here on Torah Life Ministries. Shalom, shalom. Come out of the world, oh my people, seek the truth, avoid the evil, learn Yahweh's ways.